Welcome. Uh, Meat Chain Philanthropy is the topic of today's webinar, and I am thrilled to be welcoming Carly Hare to the EPIP Wednesday webinar schedule to help talk about what change philanthropy is. Um, you may have heard of Joint Affinity Groups or JAG in the past, and change is the new name, face, and focus of that group. So I'm going to do a brief o overview introduction to today's presentation and some housekeeping. Um, welcome you on behalf of EPIP, and then I will pass the mic over to Carly. Oops, sorry. So, if any of you are new uh, to EPIP's community, welcome. EPIP stands for Emerging Practitioners in Philanthropy, and we are a national network of foundation professionals, social entrepreneurs, and other change makers who strive for excellence in the practice of philanthropy. Our mission is to develop emerging leaders committed to building a just, equitable, and sustainable society. And we really do this in three ways. We provide a platform for our community to connect with others, to learn and practice leadership skills, and inspire emerging ideas in the social sector. We at EPIP are honored to be part of the um, seven partnership organizations that are within the change family. Um, and you'll see as we get into the thick of the presentation that these themes of connecting, learning, practice, and inspiration um, resonate very closely with change's focus as well. If you would like to learn more about EPIP or if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, my email is on the screen right now. It's biz at epip.org. And I'm happy um, to help you learn more about membership, but also any of our upcoming events or general questions you may have. Uh, to give you a sense of a couple of things coming up on our schedule and the EPIP family, um, the, our annual conference this year is going to be in September on the from the 13th to the 15th uh, in Baltimore. And we have a conference preview webinar actually next week at the same time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, so come check out the preview. It's a great opportunity to see uh, and get to hear from some of the people who have been planning the conference, learn more about the workshops and plenaries, as well as the special offsite opportunities and other um, really wonderful elements of the conference that are going to be unveiled in the next couple days. So please um, find the registration page on epip.org slash events and let me know if you have questions, of course, and hopefully we'll see you there on that webinar as well. If you'd like to register for conference, we still have conference um, spots available and the hotel block is open until August 22. So you have just a couple more weeks to get in on that um, opportunity to get the reduced rate and uh, we'd love to be with you together in Baltimore. So hopefully you can join us there. For today's call, uh, we'll ask that you use the question box if you have any technical difficulties, if you have any challenges, can hear, if you have um, specific questions, just drop them in there and I'll try and help you troubleshoot throughout the presentation. Um, but if you have overarching questions about the content or any comments that you have about the content of the presentation itself, please also type it into that question box on your control panel and we'll uh, focus on those at the end of the presentation in the question and answer portion. Our questions and our polls in today's presentation are all anonymous. You can follow us online and join the conversation on social media with hashtag EPIP webinar. Um, we are recording this webinar so that we can spread the word uh, wide and far about the opportunities to be part of the change family. Um, and at the very end, there will be a brief survey. So if you can please take a moment just to fill out a little bit more about your experience, that'll help us continue to provide value for you guys. So without further ado, uh, well, actually, in a moment, <laughs> I'm going to ask to welcome Carly Hare, who's the Coalition Catalyst for Change Philanthropy, to the mic to tell you more about this great um, organization and vision and all that's ahead. But briefly, before we jump into that presentation, we'd love to launch just a couple quick polls to get a sense of who you are and, and who's on the line with us today. We'd love to be in a room actually having a conversation and looking at each other. But while we use the virtual platform, We'd love to first know if you're a member of a change partner organization. So APIP, ABFI, EPIP, Funders for LGBTQ Issues, HIP, NAP, or Women Funders Network. Um, if you can just take a moment to click which of these applies to you, that'd be great.
Thank you. So it looks like we have a majority coming from partner organizations, um, but 40, almost 40% 40 of us on the call are, are not part of one of those organizations. So welcome to everybody. Uh, curious to learn more about where you work. So which of these best describes your organization where uh, you're employed? If the answer is other, you can also feel free to type into the question box more specifics if you'd like to share. Great. So looks like majority are coming from foundations and other. We also have some folks from affinity groups and nonprofits on the line. And then finally, before we jump in, uh, what is your primary role of that organization? Again, um, if you'd like to share in the other box, that's great. I'm going to close it in just a couple seconds if anyone wants to vote before we do so. All right, so it looks like we have a majority of programs, some folks from management, and a lot of folks representing other functions. Um, we also have an event planner on the line. So again, thank you all for joining. Really glad to have you here. Excited um, to welcome you, Carly. And now we'll uh, turn the screen over to you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Biz, for that introduction and for preparing the conversation. And good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I'm really excited to work with you all and share the exciting news about change. Um, but before we begin, we want to talk a little bit about where we came from. The Joint Affinity Group uh, was founded in 1993 in an effort to unify identity-based affinity groups uh, in a strategic uh, network. And over the past two decades, as JAG, we have worked to educate grant makers about the value of inclusion in foundations, including increased understanding of the interrelatedness uh, and multiple identities and issues um, that are represented from our network and in our community. Our core partners, as um, Biz had shared, are the um, APIP, Asian American and Pacific Islanders in Philanthropy, the Association of Black Foundation Executives, or APTI, Emerging Practitioners in Philanthropy, or EPIP, Funders for LGBTQ Issues, Hispanics in Philanthropy, or HIP, Native Americans in Philanthropy, or NAP, and Women's Funding Network. Um, we have had, over the last 20 plus years, some fluctuation, but the core of our partners have been uh, these affinity groups who are centered around community uh, and identity-based work. Over those 20 years, as I said, JAG worked in multiple areas um, to move an agenda of inclusive, uh, inclusivity, diversity, uh, and ultimately equity um, forward in philanthropic conversations. And as we began to do that, we developed um, our practice and, and evolved our work. And that evolution continues today into what we now um, we are sharing and presenting is change philanthropy. In part of our work uh, as the joint affinity groups that has evolved to uh, our work here at Change, we really were strategic about when we worked together in partnership and in coalition and collaboration and identified three primary areas for our first two decades of work. The first, advancing equity and philanthropy through cutting edge analysis that drew upon our partners' experience, perspectives, knowledge, and values um, that were in, in engaged and present in their work. The second area which we saw strategic alignment in our work uh, was around aligning the actual work we were doing between our partners and allies in the field in order to build a more equitable and uh, equity for diverse communities. And that looked like hosting convenings, pulling resources and tools together, developing intersectional strategies, and uniting upon uh, shared interests. And then finally, um, our third area in our uh, 
areas of focus as JAG was activating change and philanthropy in, in moving resource uh, or attention to diverse communities through our collaborative practices, through mobilizing our partners and allies, and identifying action uh, in which our partners, members, and network could be involved in. So over that 20-year um, history, we continued to evolve individually, institutionally, and as a, as a larger network and collection. We began to work and integrate diversity, inclusion, social justice practice uh, into uh, deeper into our networks and our membership framework. And as the individual partners, organizations developed and deepened their work, so did our need to be more strategic about collectively addressing equity. JAG's evolution and our work around our core partners has been through the support of each other, through advisement and framing on issues in the field. And our process uh, for this next level of shift um, really um, was connected and uh, solidified in 2014 when our partners held the Unity Summit. We brought together over 450 philanthropic professionals, uh, really focused on intersectional content, relationship exploration, and allyship building. Um, this gathering catalyzed energy and opportunity to address and focus uh, philanthropic energy on the conversation around equity. It allowed us to align our network, and, and over the following year, we began to see an evolution happen between our work uh, institutionally and in partnership. In 2015, we became more concrete around what that evolution would look like, and we began to rethink our work, our, our the, refocus our energy, and transform into change philanthropy. One of the major differences um, between the JAG as we, we all knew it in the field and the shift to change is, is allowing us to open up and be more field-facing, advocacy uh, engaged, and um, coalition building in that framework. To begin our process, we really had to work with our seven partners to identify what were the shared values in which we could move this work forward, uh, where did we have um, did we coalesce and where could we synchronize our energy and activities? And five core areas um, were identified that were very intrinsic to all of our work. One is that our work, our outcomes, our impact are community centered. Two, that we're, we're supporting and promoting positive social change. Uh, three, that we're working in collaboration and partnership with each other. Four, that the change space is really about the intersectional approaches and opportunities within philanthropy, and five, that we honor and hold in our center um, the practices and, um, and movement building towards equity, inclusion, and diversity. Um, by uniting our networks, our skills, and our resources, um, we are a broader coalition and network committed to making this uh, and seeking a broader and higher vision. In that process in 2015, we also went through a pretty intensive theory of change process to really um, identify where and how we wanted to be, the vision we saw in for philanthropic change, and how we could uniquely play a part in that. Um, we re we refocused the overarching. Um, outcome we'd like to see and, and major goal, which is philanthropy works in partnership with underserved communities to build a strong and inclusive society. And within that, we saw two primary areas in which we wanted to see significant change, uh, and that was around uh, having a sector that was more equitable, had a more equitable distribution of philanthropic resources to support diverse communities. And then, and then the actual community culture part shift as well, so that there was a status quo of philanthropic culture intentionally supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, this uh, clarification of our shared goals, expanded network, and vision, and areas of impact allowed us um, to more cl to clarify uh, what vision of philanthropy we really we see. Um, as ideal, and that is that our vision is around transforming and challenging philanthropic culture to advance equity for the benefit of all communities and ignite positive social change. 
to do that and to 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 grow us towards that mission, our, our vision, uh, our mission really is, around, is about creating a broader coalition. So Change Philanthropy is a coalition of philanthropic networks working together to strengthen bridges across funders and communities. We are transforming philanthropy from within by building knowledge, fostering diversity, and creating connections. We hold our center um, collectively around the, the idea that change philanthropy as a coalition brings a unique sense of expertise, competency, and lived experience into this intersectional work. What makes us unique is an advocacy of community priorities of our partners with an intersectional approach. Each partner organization um, manages and organizes their resources, builds networks and the connections between folks, and represents the communities that they are actively advocating and engaged with. That lived experience shapes the work that they individually do and then ultimately what we do collectively, giving us a connection to the strengths and assets of each of the different communities as well as a better assessment of opportunities, needs, and solutions. Together, we're, we're working to raise the level of dialogue and shift the practice among funders so that philanthropic dollars are dispersed through equitable uh, practices and in a culture that supports and, and honors that work um, and that we are able to address the true concer concerns of community. We look to serve as that bridge uh, given that our networks are made up and compromised of folks um, with varying lived experiences connected to that, to those uh, identities and in an intersectional um, way to bridge the work that foundations are actually doing and our allied net, allied partners within that work. To reach these this overarching goal uh, and support our philanthropic partners in this work, we've been investing intentionally on the impact we're trying to have uh, in the communities we're working with. And to get there, we've identified a number of strategic um, approaches in which we will address the work uh, around structural and institutional change, and then we will coalesce individual groups, con network communities together in order to achieve this. And we believe united, we can move the philanthropic sector forward, create real change, and create real change in uh, support of those communities uh, in philanthropic investment. To give a little background into what are these areas in which change philanthropy looks to support uh, individuals, institutions, partner with field, uh, sector-wide partners, uh, we've devised these five strategic uh, approaches. The first is to celebrate impact. We, recognize, we want to recognize individuals and institutions, foundations and donors um, who have made a strong commitment to advancing equity uh, across all communities. Second is around is to build knowledge. Um, we will offer a resource hub of data, best practices, events, tools, uh, all with an equity lens. We will provide some curation of how to navigate those tools uh, and different editorial options for how and how you come into the work and how you can move through the spectrum of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and finally, or, and thirdly, we will work uh, to expand leadership, to deepen the relationships within the leadership pipeline, to authentically engage diverse, uh, experienced candidates at levels of the board, at staff, um, in our field partners uh, across the way, to really have that lived experience, that intersectional identity, be able to be honored in uh, leadership, as, uh, more fully in leadership. Our fourth area is um, to create connections. And that's fostering the creative and collaborative space to strengthen bridges uh, across our sector to support partnerships in shared practice and to develop strategies for impact. And that may happen virtually like we're doing today. It'll happen in person. It'll happen at partner spa in partner spaces. Um, and it will happen because of change uh, agents and allies um, like those of you on the call today. And then finally, uh, our, our final area is cultivating partnerships. We look to help continue the coordination uh, and advancement of programs that promote effective intersectional approaches. We help to initiate deeper dialogues and activities 
uh, around uh, how we ignite positive social change within our sector. Um, change Philanthropy is excited about what this means moving forward and while our work is uh, still grounded in the values of each of our partner organizations and in the network that we provide, we are looking to build a broader coalition. We are looking at new strategies and we are looking forward to engaging folks um, within that work as we move forward. I'm going to take a pause uh, as we as, as everyone digests all that material um, before we shift gears into a conversation around a uh, deeper dive into what does that practically and um, tactically mean uh, for change philanthropy and the field uh, as we move forward. So when we think about deeper dive um, and how we can begin to address this work differently, uh, our first step forward was identifying uh, areas in which within these five strategic approaches uh, we might be able to provide resource, program, tools, and connections. Um, and the first component of that was really looking at um, how we can create a website that will uh, support the needs of individuals and institutions navigating this work, and what are some of the program resources and, and, and pieces that we can um, connect into. I'll be using the framework of our five strategic areas to highlight the programs that, and activities uh, and resources we will have moving forward um, in this conversation. Our first area is the, uh, in our change effort area, is around celebrating impact. And celebrating impact, um, we're thinking this through the lens of how do we highlight more stories. Um, to, to progressively impact inclusion, equity, diversity, and philanthropy, it takes commitment and courage, and we want to honor that. Change Philanthropy celebrates the funders that not only uh, track their information, but also work to improve the work that they're doing, and the individuals that are leading this work. This work will include um, a highlighted section within our website and in our communication materials around lived experience. What is, impact, what is the impact of um, your lived experience in the work and the field? Uh, and how can we broaden uh, this and identify more philanthropic activists and change agents uh, and build out our network? It also means we want to look to a deeper dive into institutional equity profiles. How can we highlight um, the outline and outline achievements um, and models that foundations are implementing in their work to address equity internally and externally through policy and practice? And what are the areas in which they have challenges and persistent concerns and growth areas? Um, within change, that celebrating impact uh, is both about institutional, individual um, movement, um, progress, and how people navigate the spectrum of diversity, inclusion, and equity. Our second area, uh, and is the most clearly, most clearly manifested in our website, will be our resource bank. Uh, and this will be a place which will include uh, ways to look for events and programs related to diversity, equity, inclusion, tools that might be available, publications addressing various issues, and uh, a home for past webinars produced by our um, coalition members and field partners in this work. We're looking to identify ways in which um, we can provide these resources, provide some curation into navigating these spaces, and then really connecting individuals and institutions back to those host uh, partners, whether they're our coalition members or field-wide partners that have created um, work or strategy and uh, can provide feedback on how you navigate that space. Um, this is an ever-growing uh, place of resource, uh, a knowledge bank, so we will continue to add and develop more resources as we move forward. The website itself will have a place if you know of a resource to submit and that we can begin to include and deepen our, our, our um, rich, enrich our bank in what's re or valid, uh, offered and, and available. We, we will look to, as I said, develop this work um, and think through the work with social justice and equity ecosystem. So that foundation staff, board, um, partners can really look to 
identify the resources they might need to, to navigate their work. Additionally, um, we will launch with the website a, a recruitment phase for a diverse consultant database with the support of the Core Center for Social for Social Impact. And we'll host a diverse consultant database to expand uh, the opportunities for the network uh, of individual consultants and um, and partners looking to provide uh, consulting services to its foundations and nonprofits, particularly with the lens of interest in diversity, equity, and inclusion. When the website launches, we'll spend the first um, quarter or the final quarter of 2016 uh, focused on the recruitment of the and expanding the consultant database itself. And in 2017, we will launch with um, an opportunity for foundations to coordinate and connect to that network as they are looking to diversify um, and engage a diverse uh, network of consultants in their practice of their work. Uh, and the, another area in which we are, will focus efforts are cultivating partnerships. And some of that will look very strategic in identifying one-on-one -on -one partnerships with external institutions. Uh, sometimes that will be internal partnerships between core, partner, core coalition members. Um, and we will look for different ways to bring different uh, insights and audiences together to address uh, issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. By creating programs across our core partners and with field partners, this is a key part of our work to promote effective intersectional approaches to grant making as well as to develop cross-cultural partnerships um, with our allies. We are committed to initiating and coordinating um, deeper conversations and dialogues, panel discussions, trainings, and other events in which we're bringing together uh, and facilitating the resources, the knowledge, and the energy that our um, coalition partners bring into the work. The first practical example of that will be uh, a project we are working with, with the Council on Foundations for an HR summit on investing in the talent pipeline. It'll be this October and is focused on foundations uh, with populations, uh, with staff sizes of 20 or more that have a dedicated HR department. Uh, or person in charge and looking at how they um, assess their culture and climate of their organization, how they engage, recruit, build um, job descriptions, understanding diversity, equity, inclusion, what that means to them as an institution and their priority and commitment to that, uh, and then looking at practical and tactical strategies moving forward from there. So we're excited to, to build uh, within this network and connect with foundations that are, are facing these challenges and Carly, I'm not sure what happened, but it sounds like you moved, your volume actually cut out right there. Yeah, it looks like a couple of us had this issue. Please bear with us. Carly and I are going to work on sorting this out. She's going to call right back in. <clears throat> so um, just one moment. Thank you, guys. Hi, everyone. Sorry for that technical difficulty. <laughs> no worries. We can hear you now. Thanks. OK, perfect. Uh, I apologize uh, for the moving of the satellite. I'm going to see what I can claim in that space. <laughs> but <laughs> just sharing a, a little, uh, the, this is one of the opportunities uh, this HR summit, along with other practical partnerships, will be building in the field and supporting um, and, and uh, conducting more field-wide approaches into how we can address and support our, uh, the broader spectrum of folks working um, to navigate diversity, uh, inclusion, and equity. Uh, in addition to that, uh, within our other programmatic areas, uh, the expanding leadership in 2000, 
and 16, with the launch of the website, we will have a job bank in which we will be identifying um, and, and pulling information from our core coalition members about job postings to create a really vibrant place in which um, if you're looking to navigate the philanthropic world, you have some outlined some opportunities. The second piece of our work, which will be again in 2017 around expanding leadership, is developing a um, diverse talent um, bank and doing advocacy for that bank. We will really be looking on identifying areas in which we can support uh, foundations and search firms in navigating, identifying um, folks that are interested in movement within the field, identifying levels and areas and geographies in which people are interested in, and helping advocate um, for uh, leadership uh, that is diverse, uh, connected, intersectional uh, in its efforts. Um, and you'll hear more about that um, primarily at the beginning of 2017 as we roll out our talent bank recruitment uh, efforts. And in our final area, creating connections, we'll continue to promote ways in which people can virtually and in person connect. Uh, some of that will be through social media, some of that will be through partnering with other field partners around identifying areas in which we can work together um, and bringing people together in place um, under a in partnership under a change um, lens and umbrella. And then most um, significantly is repeating and bringing uh, and rebuilding on that momentum that we um, were so inspired by in 2014 with uh, a, a unity summit uh, and bringing our collective networks back together. We are focused on expanding this idea of a national movement on funders that is um, focus on improving the health and well-being of all of our communities. We recognize that this is, um, to be able to do this, we must be able to connect with our peers uh, who are in similar and varied places along their journey. It is important for us uh, to make those connections to increase our impact by connecting with each other across the philanthropic sector, including our other infrastructure um, philanthropic serving organizations and allies. We can all create a shared space and strategy uh, across the sector. And in turn, we hope to elevate our collective dialogue on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Change plans on hosting a Unity Summit every three years. Uh, and as we uh, move into this next planning phase of Unity Summit 2017, we're excited to engage more folks in this dialogue um, and to expand um, the opportunity for folks to be in community together. And with that, I'll take a pause. We want to run another poll to get a, an idea of um, if you have been involved in, in the, this type of convening before and your interest in the future. Yeah, so I'm going to just first launch a poll to ask if anyone on the call was with us at the 2014 Unity Summit. Gonna leave it up just a couple more seconds if anyone else would like to vote. All right, so it looks like a majority of folks were not, though a couple people were. And then um, for the upcoming opportunity, are you interested in joining for Unity 2017? Great, so it looks like the majority of us will be there, hopefully, um, with a few folks still deciding and a few folks might not be able to join. Wonderful, thank you. Um, as we are in preparation for the Unity Summit, we'll be reaching out to folks to, to gather ideas, to think about sessions, to move forward in um, communicating the different um, positive outcomes and correlated energy that was created around 2000. 14's Unity Summit and where we're able to bridge and also uh, include more folks in within that dialogue as we move forward. Um, as I said, we will, with the launch of the um, 
website will have more materials we'll begin to share about the Unity Summit itself. We'll have a call for interested individuals to join us in the planning process. We'll have an opportunity for folks um, to engage in session suggestion and idea creation. Um, and then as we get closer, we'll be conducting some um, outreach around research and conducting some um, more an, uh, identified areas of analysis to present and share uh, at the 2017 Unity Summit. So I'm excited uh, as we're building towards our next large national creating connections convening uh, and look forward to engaging um, you all uh, and the sector within this process. Um, so as we think through where we want the work to go, an area in which and which is really what does that mean for you as individuals and for your institution? How can you join the movement and what does that look like? And we have three different areas in which you can join the movement. Um, the first is connect. Connect with the membership organizations and the coalition members um, that are part of change. Uh, if you are currently a member of any of them, you will be receiving more materials this fall about the launch of change and where change, how change plays a role in supporting each individual um, network's work and um, also how each partner builds towards the collective movement. So I encourage you to connect with those uh, individual um, uh, coalition members uh, from, our, from our group of seven. We also will be expanding our work to connect with other philanthropic partners. Uh, so having a, a network of folks that are collaborating with us on different work, particularly around the Unity Summit. And as we connect to the field-wide partners, you'll see more and more opportunities to connect through your individual identified um, network uh, networks that you're connected to. So you should see more and more opportunities for you to connect within the broader change network. We also encourage you to connect with us on social media um, via Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, all three of those um, channels uh, we will be active in. Um, we already are pretty active in Facebook right now, but you'll see uh, continued growth within that area. We'll be sharing opportunities, spotlighting um, profiles, connecting individuals, and creating different um, uh, social media networks within there for people to connect and stay connected within that space. Uh, the second area in which you can join the movement is communicate. It's communication. So we'll be sharing newsletters um, within our network, uh, which is new for Change Philanthropy, a monthly newsletter that will spotlight and highlight and amplify the work of the seven individual change partners. We'll highlight the areas in which um, there is intersect intersectional action uh, opportunity and promise happening. We'll identify upcoming events in which uh, you as individual um, philanthropic activists and uh, allies can participate in um, the diversity, equity, and inclusion programmatic spectrum. Um, there will be a variety of ways in which you can think about how you can plug into that work. And then finally, as we build out the network, we're really looking to diversify the stories we're telling and profiling folks. So we will launch a survey um, on social media via Facebook uh, this week asking you to share your lived experience. We'll integrate those lived experience stories within the rest of our profiles which we're collecting. Uh, and this is the chance to say who you are, how you navigate the world, how your lived experience has impacted and guided your work, and what change you want to see in philanthropy. So as those posts go out, we'll, all of our partners will have them um, and we'll be communicating that primarily through social media. Um, however, you will see it, be, those lived experiences implemented within our, um, our network itself and as part of our tool uh, and part of our website and other social media posts and websites throughout the year. And then finally, engage. If you engage in building out the resource uh, bank. If you see jobs that look interesting, there's a form in which you can post jobs, events, and resources. Um, if you, if your own institution is is producing something make, and you don't see it on the list, make sure you, you give us a heads up and we can make sure we can include it in our resources. We encourage you to engage in the ongoing activities in which each of our individual partners are um, coordinating uh, and, and facilitating. And then ultimately, as we build towards the Unity Summit, we encourage you to think about joining in our planning process uh, and then also in our active idea generation phase. 
with that, I'm going to turn it back over to um, to Biz to poll and see where you might be interested in participating as we move the work forward. Yeah, so Carly has just gone over these three different buckets, connect, communicate, and engage. And um, we're just curious to hear off this first impression, which of these three ways or how many of these three ways are you personally interested in being involved? You can click as many of these boxes as uh, jump out to you. So please go ahead and vote. Great, I'm gonna leave it up for about five more seconds if anyone else wants to share your thoughts. Great, thank you. So always, um, for sure, people are voting and interested in each of them, but it's like most, most people are going to start by connecting. Wonderful. Thank you, Liz. And so, so the question is, when, when is this change happening? Um, our launch is scheduled for August 15th. There will be a public um, announcement made. Um, via Change, uh, our own Change Network. Uh, if you haven't, I encourage you to go to the Change website uh, right now and subscribe on our email list uh, so you get included in that launch. Uh, if you uh, also, all of our individual coalition members will be uh, providing an announcement into that as our launch um, unrolls and as our website is being unveiled um, over the next month. You'll hear more stories around why um, individual change coalition members are part of this work as partners uh, and as individuals. You'll also see other areas in which we're trying to promote um, opportunity for more engagement and communication uh, within that launch as well. This um, subscribing enrolls you into the conversations around our monthly newsletters and in the launch itself. And then, as I said, our partners will be rolling out additional materials over the first um, quarter of the launch. Um, so you can, can connect directly to change, or you can connect to change through your organizational partners and through our coalition partners. And as we continue to expand our, our conversation, you'll see more and more um, change philanthropy connections and presence in our other philanthropic serving organization um, allies. Uh, and network um, connection. Then finally, um, we wanted to open up the conversation to um, see if you had any questions, comments, um, clarifications that would make sense, and also share our information. You've seen the website is um, www.changephilanthropy.org. Um, you can contact us via there, via that entity, and my email is here as well. So I will turn it over to um, Biz, who will help coordinate any um, call questions that have made it into the conversation already. Great. Um, thank you, Carly. Uh, anyone who has questions, please go ahead and type those into the question box. Um, obviously, you can follow up directly with Carly at the email on the screen. But if you have questions or comments that you want to share in this forum right now, we have a few more minutes and we'd love to hear from you. Um, I just have a quick clarification a date on the, you mentioned, Carly, that folks are going to be getting emails um, through the networks over the next um into the fall, you said. So should people keep their eye out this month or next month, or when, when should folks hope to get that information? Do there will know? be a coordinated launch uh, the week of August 15th. So you'll, if you're on the change email list, you'll get a direct email to you. If you're one of the change partner organizations within that week, you will see, receive an email from each of the change partners um, in um, identifying um, and, and helping support the launch uh, in the space. And then throughout the first quarter, you will see uh, reoccurring spotlights within um, other partner newsletters, uh, as well as other field partners, um, in helping announce the conversation between the two. 
between the field at large. Okay, great. It looks like the questions have been answered. So, um, okay. I great. So we look forward to seeing everyone. Yeah, we look forward to seeing everyone um, and sharing the launch with everyone on August fifteenth. We are looking to make this an interactive and useful um, platform for people to engage. So the first few months, we'll be asking for feedback and connecting with folks around how useful it was. It will be uh, the next phase of evolution for us. This isn't a um, ta-da, we're done. It's a here's this phase and how can we support the work along the way. Um, and we're excited to build this movement and have you all as partners and allies in this work. I want to thank everyone for their time today. I really appreciate um, your time and energy in this call. And I look forward for, to have you um, as change agents, allies, and activists within our work and network with us. Thank you, Carly. Um, and thank you, everyone who joined and for everyone who participated in the polls. We're at EPIP, we're really excited about all that's ahead with change. And it's been an honor to um, be part of this. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day.